Okay, I'm parked here in the uh, village of uh, Ascombe near just just a couple of miles from Penrith, I think. And uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, the walk I'm on, I'm not really all that satisfied with it. It uh, goes up there somewhere, up uh, some moorland. I'm looking for prehistoric remains. Nothing too famous. But unfortunately I've got to go a quarter of a mile on this quite busy lane here. It's a shortcut into Penrith, the town of Penrith. My car's just out, so it's only a hundred yards of walking on that busy lane. But I'm hoping uh, this is going to be a quiet lane. I'll be walking on this for a couple of a couple of miles, I think. As I say, this isn't very exciting. Because I'm, it's misty today as well. Nice clear blue sky, the, the excellent weather. This is my third day now of uh, excellent weather, but it's, of course, with the heat, it's in the Lake District, you get the mist, uh, well, the hazy rather than mist. Okay, that's the only trouble with a lot of these country lanes when you walk along them. They've got high hedges on either side, so, of course, you don't get any views, although, uh, well, there won't be too much of a view today with the haze. traffic on this rain. I think it's shortcut traffic because there's hardly any houses. I think there's a small hamlet up here. There's an ash tree. Okay, here's some car. I'll just get to see where this leads. Uh, I think I think this a footpath there. Okay, uh, there's a good sign that uh, you don't get that in Wales. Cornfields. That's the sign. The soil's good and the, uh, the climate can't be too bad either. Okay, at least the, uh, the uh, high hedgerows disappeared, so there's a little bit of a view. Of, and now you've got the traditional stone walls. Well, it wasn't too bad. There was a few cars. As I say, it is a shortcut lane. And there's the town of Penrith down there. I think uh, this shortcut lane is um, is mainly used by the tourists uh, that are familiar with this area. Penrith is down there. Now, High Winder House. Uh, there's a right away up here. I think this is where I turn off. Yeah, High Winder House. There's a foot public bridle way. There's Penrith over there, about three miles away, and you can see it's excellent weather for haymaking. <laughs> and uh, turn left here for the holiday cottages. Uh, now, according to the map, the uh, high point on this walk is only about 500 feet above where I uh, uh, park my car. It's a very, it's a very gradual ascent. It's not a very easy ascent. That's why I chose this way uh, to go up to the top. And uh, <coughs> well, of course, it's not, it's not a very exciting walk. But I didn't want to climb any mountains in this kind of weather. Uh, you know, I did uh, quite a bit of walking yesterday, and a total of 1,800 foot ascent. So I wanted a semi day after day. Fortunately today, so far at least, there's very little breeze, which makes it warm going. Uh, it looks like this is where I turn off, right here off this track. And uh, that's a nice parking spot in the shade. And uh, I think those holiday cottages are up there, that's private. Uh, so I'll... Uh, See where this leads. It hopefully, it leads out onto a Roman road, about half a mile or so ahead. Okay, after that, two to three mile plod up to up this slope, gradual slope, from where I park the car. I'm starting to uh, starting to look a bit more interesting. And there's Saddleback over there in the distance. Okay, I'm on the open moorland here, and. Uh, Saddleback over there. 
and I just spotted it kind of like he was on the skyline a moment ago. There's a lone walker. He's probably walking along the Roman road. Okay, it's a bit of a slog to get here, coming from Ascombe. But uh, finally, it's starting to uh, become a lot more interesting. There's the Lake Allswater, Allswater. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. And here's the Roman road. Yeah, so. And the other reason I'm covered up here is because there's uh, prehistoric remains, I think, dotted around on this moorland. Uh, if I can find them. Just looked at the map, and this isn't the Roman road. It looks like a Roman road, or the remains. Well, it's just the track of a Rome, uh, you know, well, the ro the route of a ro former Roman road. The uh, it's, uh, it's about a 50 foot descent down there, I think, according to the map, the Roman road. So I'll take this little tr trail here, see if I can get down there. But unfortunately, I do lose a little bit of height. A change of mind, I'll, I'll go to the top of Ascombe Fell while I'm up, up here. And there, down there is Pooley Bridge. That's where most walkers probably come from, Pooley Bridge, at the end of a... End of Oswater Lake, and that's uh, Go Barrow Fell there, which I climbed yesterday, and that's why it's quite a fair bit of exercise. That it's not the, one of the big mountains back there, but still, it's starting from the the lake itself. It's quite a climb. It's, it's a good climb up there. Those are the first two walkers I've passed on this walk. Uh, as I say, they're almost certainly going down to Pooley Bridge. And uh, over there is uh, Hell Velin. I think it's the second highest mountain. Yeah, the second highest mountain. Uh, or the third highest, if you include Scaffell. Highest mountain in the Lake District. It's 3,100 and something feet high. It's a bit of breeze has sprung up. Welcome breeze. And uh, this looks like the high point of Ascombe Fell. They put a little pile of little pile of stones here. So uh, yeah, that's that's a high point. So should be downhill now. So it's an easy walk, really. Uh, but I'll just go to those stones and have a break. A good advantage of going in these out of the way places. You generally have the place to yourself. No one in sight at all. And. Uh, so uh, I had a nice break here, uh, and it's all more or less uh, downhill, I think, from now on. Uh, actually, I, I can just see over there. Yeah, I can't focus in on it because I can't see the sun on the viewfinder. But there is, uh, looks like a party of walkers, uh, after, after saying all that. There's some walkers on the skyline, so, but, but they're few and far between. I don't know if you can pick that out. There's a think they're known as the Herdwick sheep. They got uh, they almost look like goats. Uh, I'm still looking for this uh, this Roman road. Uh, nice can pile of stones here. Can uh, I think it's uh, not prehistoric, but. I think the Roman road is just a few yards down here somewhere. Okay, I think I've reached the Roman road. They generally, the Roman roads were built to run in a straight line, in forts and Roman towns. And uh, they, they didn't bother to contour around hills, they just uh, went straight over the top, uh, if it was at all possible, and then down into the valleys and up again in a straight line. Tough walking for the legionnaires back in those days. The interesting thing about uh, walking in the wilds, you'll turn a corner and suddenly you'll meet uh, walkers, but they're, they're, all, they're all very friendly. Uh, all, all, they're all ready with a greeting.
keys has picked up a bit, so there's going to be an audio problem. Pulley Bridge, one and a half miles, and the other castle, three miles. That's where I'm, I'll be visiting later. Ask him, fell, I've just come from there. Uh, Cellarin, one and three quarter miles. Howtown, three and a quarter miles. Nice new signpost up in this desolate moorland. But not, it doesn't feel desolate though in this sunny, under the sunshine here. Okay, the cockpit stone circle is coming up. There's a bit of a breeze moving, so uh, there are some people there. So uh, just sitting on one of the stones. It's quite, uh, quite impressive. It's quite large, of course. Prehistoric remains. <coughs> Unfortunately, uh, uh, I don't have the place to myself, but that's, uh, that's still uh, well, it's a good day for taking the dog for a walk. Yeah, I'll do the circuit anyway. And now I'll go right in the distance there. Well, we can pick it out again with this camera. The sunshine. Yeah, something called the Copstone. Go and have a look at that. The cockpit stone circle is down there. Uh, Askew Fell, the summit is up there. Well, I've come down, came down that path there. Now I don't know if this is the so-called copstone, but uh, there's no actual. There's a bit of a trail that goes around there, but you have to cross the bog to get to the close-up for the stone. In fact, that, that is the stone, but. I'm not sure, but it, looked, it looks like it's been there <laughs> deliberately put there, and it's been there a long time. Uh, oh, who knows? I, I, I sort of, uh, yeah, you need a, one of these uh, local experts as a guide. So, um, yeah, I'm wrong. That's not the cup stone, that's just a pile of stones. Copstone is some distance, so I'm going in the wrong direction. Copstone's way over there somewhere. Uh, so I'll retrace some steps and see if I can find it. There's a few more people up here now. Mountain bikers. The stone circles back there. I'm taking a little bit of a shortcut. That's the main track where those people are. See if this just to cut out a corner here. Hope I don't get lost again well-trodden paths on this moorland, so it's quite a popular place. Place to myself again. I think the Copstone is uh, still some distance down here, maybe half a mile. I was uh, just past a couple of old-timers with mobility, uh, kind of, uh, kind of, well, kind of like uh, cis. Uh, like uh, little uh, push chairs, and I can see now there's a car park there. <laughs> and here's the cop stone. There's no mistake in this. Uh, stone is about a quarter. Of, if that's how you pronounce it, cop stone. Quarter of a mile back there. Look at this, this looks, this looks more interesting. This has obviously been placed here. It's a, some kind of a canned circle. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, that one is. Yeah, that's a type, that's a good example of a, I presume it's a canned circle. Yeah. So. Okay, it's a nice morning walk, but I didn't bring enough water with me. I've only got a half litre bottle, and there's, that looks like another stone, a uh, can circle right there. Yeah, that's a, so they're dotted about on this uh, moorland. Yeah. Yeah, 
quite a quite a long walk this. I don't know if I can pick this up, but down there there's a see after I got back to the car I'll drive down there and have a cup of tea and maybe have a look around that. It's a little bit of uphill work here but there's a nice cool breeze blowing. It makes a nice difference so you can just see a little bit of saddle back there. Now there's a tumulus just a few yards up here. Uh, I'll just have a look at that and then but this is the track back to the car park. So I'll see if I can find this tumulus just just a few yards here somewhere. That might be it there. Just it's hard, just a little little bump in the ground, covered with ferns. All right, so hopefully it's all downhill from now on. Back to the car park. I'll just take a picture of that guy there on the sky on the skyline. He's got no. He's just going up almost in his birthday suit, so he doesn't want, he's not worried about catching sunburn. Back to nature. Signs of civilization up here on this, uh, or at the moment, deserted moorland. Ascombe Fell Loop, Pooley Bridge two and a half miles, Ascombe Fell Loop, Lother Castle two miles. So that's a loop off the oh, old waterway. Okay, that's that's uh, so. Yeah, which way? I'll just uh, check, with, make sure I'm going down in the right right direction before I just start descending. That's a nice stand of sycamore trees there. Uh, and there's again. Yeah, okay, pick it up. Now the castle in the distance there somewhere. Yeah. Well, I start to cloud over a little bit. It's forecast rain later on and all day tomorrow. And look at the, look at this well-trodden track here. So when I went up by that uh, tarmac lane, uh, this is this is the route. <laughs> well, probably 95% or more of people when they go up to ask them fell. This this is this is the uh, track they take. Okay, I can see why this is so popular, this track. There's a hand, there's the car park, a free car parking area there. They, 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 that's one thing that's not, never seems to be emphasized in these guidebooks, is where the handy places to park, especially free car parking. Okay, I'm finally coming into the village of Ascombe, where I, uh, where I parked. So, that cottage there, they probably got good price tags. It looks like it's part of a farm. Well, originally it was a farm. This is turning out to be uh, quite a long video. Uh, so, uh, uh, here I am in a, well, uh, like a traditional Lakeland village. What's, uh, yeah, it's Lakeland, village of uh, Ascombe. Okay, I've just come down there. This is the crossroads, Ascombe Stores, the Queen's Head pub. That would be a nice place to have a cup of tea, but I want to head over to Lother, Lother Castle if I've got time. I'm just parked up here. So that's the end of this video.